Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. Welcome to this episode of Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. My name is Jonathan. And I'm Sarah. And today on the podcast, we are diving headfirst into one part of alternative power sources for engines. What am I talking about? Well, more specifically, hydrogen fuel cells. Right. So there's been a lot of attention on battery electric cars, and we even did a podcast episode on the different types of these cars. But fuel cell electric vehicles seem to not get as much attention and therefore not as much as known about this form of alternative powertrain. Yes. You know, zero pollutants, less noise, all these amazing things. I mean, these are some of the greatest hopes for electrically powered vehicles. And, you know, when it comes to electromobility, most people think of vehicles with a large, clunky battery that you can charge from a wall socket. But there's... Another technology that traffic experts are expecting a lot from, including an alternative to charging times. This is pretty big. Yeah, that's right. The technology we're talking about is the hydrogen fuel cell. In cars, it's also known as the fuel cell electric vehicle, or for short, FCEV. But not everyone is familiar with this technology, how it works, what the pros and cons are, and whether it will in fact play an important role in the future. Exactly. And as luck would have it, our lovely podcast episode listeners, we've got all the answers, well, some of them, not all, for you in today's episode called All About Hydrogen Cars. So let's go. Okay. So the first question that most people ask is, how does a hydrogen fuel cell work? Jonathan, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure thing. So the hydrogen fuel cell cars, they're powered by an electric motor and are therefore classified as e-cars, right? Now, the common abbreviation is FCEV, which is short for fuel cell electric vehicle, which Sarah told us about earlier. So FCEV is not to be confused with BEV or battery electric vehicles. Now, There's one crucial difference between hydrogen fuel cell cars and other electric vehicles, and that is hydrogen cars produce the electricity themselves. Guys, this is groundbreaking. Yes, Jonathan, this really is a game changer. So unlike in fully electric or plug-in hybrid vehicles, the vehicle does not get its power from a built-in battery that can be charged from an external power source Instead, hydrogen cars effectively have their own efficient power plant on board, the fuel cell. Pretty cool, huh? Totally. Now, in fuel cell technology, there's a process that is known as reverse electrolysis that takes place. Now, this reverse electrolysis is when hydrogen reacts with oxygen inside the fuel cell. So the hydrogen comes from one or more tanks built into the FCEV, while the oxygen comes from the ambient air, so all around us. Now, the only results of this reaction are electrical energy, heat, and water, which is emitted through the exhaust as water vapor. So that means hydrogen-powered cars are locally emission-free, right? Yes, most definitely, and that's huge. But we're gonna go into that later in the podcast. So the electricity that's generated in the fuel cell can take two different routes, depending on the demands of the specific driving situation that you're in. So one route that it could flow into is um, the electric motor, and one route flows to the electric motor and actually powers the FCEV directly, and the other route charges a battery, which stores the energy until it's needed for the electric motor. Now, this battery, known as a peak power battery, is significantly smaller and therefore lighter than the battery of a fully electric car, as it's being constantly recharged by the fuel cell. Win-win. And like other e-cars, hydrogen vehicles can also recover or recuperate braking energy. So the electric motor converts the car's kinetic energy back into electrical energy and then feeds it into the peak power battery. Exactly. So it's very much recycling its own energy as it's going along. So that's the breakdown of how a hydrogen fuel cell car works. Sarah, what is the next question that people have? 
Okay, so question number two is, what are the pros and cons of hydrogen-powered cars? Well, we can look at this from two main perspectives. So we've got the user perspective and then that of the environment. And of course, if any technology is to succeed as an alternative to the combustion engine, it has to be user-friendly and at the same time significantly reduce emissions. Why don't we start by looking at the key benefits and the disadvantages for drivers of hydrogen fuel cell cars? Awesome. So the advantage number one for drivers is the propulsion in hydrogen fuel cell cars, which is purely electrical, right? This is great. When you drive one, it feels the same as driving a regular electric car with a big clunky battery. So there's virtually no engine noise and a lively start because electric motors provide full torque even at low speeds. Yeah. And advantage number two is the quick fueling time. Depending on the charging station and battery capacity, fully electric vehicles currently need between 30 minutes or even several hours for a full charge. But the hydrogen tanks of fuel cell cars, on the other hand, are full and ready to go again in less than five minutes. So for users, this brings vehicle availability and flexibility in line with a conventional car. This is great. And speaking about saving time, advantage number three is that hydrogen cars, they can have a longer range than purely electric cars. A full hydrogen tank will last around 300 miles, which is approximately 480 kilometers. And battery-powered cars can only match this with very large batteries, which in turn, that leads to an increase in both vehicle weight and charging times. So win-win again. And advantage number four is that the driving range of fuel cell vehicles is not dependent on the outside temperature. In other words, it doesn't lose range in cold weather, unlike battery electric cars. Awesome. So the advantages for the driver, they're clear. FCEVs feel just like driving an electric car with a battery. They have quick fueling times, they get a really long range, and you can expect the same range whether in rain or shine, snow or sleet. All right, so that's all good news and it sounds really great, but what about the disadvantages for FCEV users? Exactly. I mean, it does sound too good to be true. Sarah, do you want to lead us into the disadvantages of FCEVs? Well, one disadvantage is the sparsity of options for refueling. Now, Jonathan, a hydrogen engine is refueled at special fuel pumps, which in the future will probably find their way into ordinary service stations. But as things stand now, there are still very few refueling stations for hydrogen-powered cars. At the end of 2019, for example, there were only around 40 in the U.S. as compared to approximately 80 in Germany. So you really do have to plan your driving trip wisely. Yeah, totally. I mean, it, it. I don't know, it's sort of like the chicken or the egg. The low demand from customers won't allow for profitable mass production of FCEVs. And as long as there are hardly any hydrogen cars on the road, oil companies will be a little bit hesitant to expand their refueling station network. So there's that. Yeah, true. But, you know, that said, there is still hope. Uh, vehicle manufacturers like BMW have joined forces with hydrogen producers and filling station operators. And the plan is to expand the hydrogen fueling station network to allow more hydrogen cars to hit the roads by the year 2022. That is good news. And also, more fueling stations are needed in neighboring countries to actually make it possible to travel outside of Germany via FCEV for all of those international journeys. Right. So, so far, we've got four plus points for FCEVs and one minus point for FCEVs. And that minus point is currently being worked on to eradicate that disadvantage altogether. Excellent. So, so far, we've got four plus points for FCEVs and only one minus point. And that minus point is currently being worked on to eradicate that disadvantage altogether. Now, at the end of the day, of course, hydrogen mobility is only helpful to the climate if the hydrogen used is produced with electrical power from renewable energies. Converting electrical power into hydrogen and back again involves a lot of steps, and 
Unfortunately, the overall efficiency of a fuel cell powertrain is lower compared to a battery electric powertrain. Exactly. And the goal is that the energy system needs to produce green hydrogen in high quantities and at affordable costs to be used for individual mobility. Yeah, that's our hope for FCEVs. Exactly. All right, let's move on to the third frequently asked question about hydrogen-powered cars, and that is... How much do they cost and why? Yeah, so in addition to the thin fueling station network, there is another reason for the as of yet rather low demand for hydrogen fuel cell cars, and that is because they are still relatively expensive. The few models of fuel cell vehicles that are already available on the market uh, cost around 70,000 um, euros, which is about 80,000 US dollars. And that's for a mid or upper mid range vehicle. And it's almost twice as much as a comparable fully electric or hybrid vehicle. Mm, something to consider. But, you know, that said, there are a range of reasons why hydrogen fuel cell cars are still a little bit pricey. I mean, in addition to small volumes, which means that production is still to be industrialized, there's also the question of, you know, the need for the precious metal platinum, which acts as a catalyst during power generation. Now, the amount of platinum needed for vehicle fuel cells has already been greatly reduced, which is great. And a big goal is to lower the price of FCEVs to that of other electric cars. So there is still hope yet for the price. Yeah, well, another reason for the high purchase price is that hydrogen fuel cell cars tend to be quite large because the hydrogen tank or tanks take up a lot of space. The drive unit for a purely battery-driven electric vehicle, on the other hand, also fits into small cars. And that's why classic electric cars can currently be found in all vehicle classes. Exactly. And, you know, in addition to the cost of purchasing, Operating costs also play an important role in the cost effectiveness and acceptance of a propulsion technology. Yeah, the cost per mile of running hydrogen cars in some countries is currently almost twice as high as that of battery powered vehicles charged at home. But, you know, Jonathan, if the demand for hydrogen increases, then the price could drop dramatically. Mm, cross my fingers on that one. So, Sarah, what's another question in our list? All right, so the fourth question we've got is how environmentally friendly and sustainable is hydrogen fuel cell technology? That's something that a lot of people are wondering about. Yes, and alternative propulsion systems are designed to reduce the emission of pollutants. And the exhaust stream from a hydrogen fuel cell consists of pure water vapor, so that's fantastic. And hydrogen fuel cell technology is therefore locally emission-free. That means it keeps the air clean in cities. Mm, that is really good news. Mm, exactly. But the question is, does it protect the climate at the same time? Well, that depends on the conditions under which the hydrogen for the fuel cell vehicles was produced. Now, hydrogen production requires electrical energy, and this electrical energy is then used to break water down into its constituent elements, hydrogen and oxygen, via the process of electrolysis. And if the electricity used comes from renewable energy sources, then the hydrogen production has a neutral carbon footprint. And, I mean, this is the goal. This is what we all want, environmentally friendly cars. Exactly. But, Jonathan, if, on the other hand, fossil fuels are used, well, this will ultimately have a knock-on effect on the carbon footprint of the fuel cell cars using the hydrogen. Mm. How strong that effect is depends on the energy mix that's used. So, in that way, hydrogen fuel cell cars are no different from other electric vehicles. All right. There we go. So another disadvantage of producing hydrogen is the losses during electrolysis. Now, the overall efficiency in the power-to-vehicle drive energy chain is therefore only half the level of a BEV. Yes, Jonathan, but hydrogen can be produced at times when there is an oversupply of electricity from renewable energy sources. For example, when the wind or solar energy that's being currently produced is not otherwise used. 
you know, the potential for this is huge. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, you know, another positive thing is that the hydrogen is also a byproduct of many industrial processes where all too often it's treated as waste with no further use. The fuel cell offers a way to upcycle this hydrogen, although it must be cleaned first. But that is a good thing. Yes. And there's another thing. The energy balance sheet for hydrogen fuel cell cars also has to include the transportation and storage of the hydrogen. So depending on the transportation technology that's being used, so whether it's being transported as liquid or a gas, there are all sorts of costs, um, like for compression and cooling and the transport and the storage. Um, due to its better transportability and storage ability, the trend is towards liquid hydrogen, but nevertheless, the transportation and storage of hydrogen, well, at this stage, there's still it's still a lot more complex and energy intensive than for gasoline or diesel. In contrast to fossil fuels, hydrogen can be produced anywhere. There's access to electricity and water. I mean, theoretically, even at the actual filling stations for fuel cell cars. So a more highly developed infrastructure could could in fact shorten transportation distances significantly at some point in the future. That is very good news. So in conclusion, to wrap this question up, hydrogen fuel cell technology, it has the potential to make ecologically sustainable mobility possible. That said, this would above all require the use of renewable energy sources when producing the hydrogen used, and also as well as an expansion of the technological infrastructure in order to shorten transportation distances. Yeah, I think it's amazing that we're able to explore this technology and find ways to make it work for us in the future. I mean, you know, nothing is perfect on the first try. And if we look at the growth of FCEV technology, it really is remarkable where we've already come. Most definitely, 100%. All right, Sarah, what's the next question on the list of questions people have about FCEVs? Okay, another question that comes up a lot is, what are the risks of hydrogen fuel cell cars? Exactly, right? What happens when hydrogen reacts with oxygen in an uncontrolled reaction? Yes, well, maybe some of you will remember this from chemistry class at school. What you get is an explosive reaction known as an oxyhydrogen gas reaction. I mean, hydrogen is flammable, as this shows, but uh, don't worry, there's no need to panic. An uncontrolled reaction of hydrogen and oxygen in the operation of an FCEV is virtually impossible. Good news. So the podcast listeners might be wondering, why is that virtually impossible? Well, it's because in hydrogen fuel cell cars, the hydrogen is stored in these thick wall tanks that are super safe. Crash tests have confirmed the safety of how hydrogen cars are designed. So the tanks come out of these crash tests undamaged. Ah, oh, that's awesome news. And, you know, we should also not forget that hydrogen technology, it's not new, but it is tried and tested in a range of multiple fields, like refineries today. They use large quantities of hydrogen as a process gas in the processing of crude oil. And pipelines and hydrogen storage have also been in operation for decades. Yeah, so this technology has been around for a while. All right, Jonathan, what is the sixth and final question we've got? Coming in at number six, we have, what role will hydrogen fuel cell technology play in the future? Yep, that's a really good question to end on. Yeah, awesome. So, you know, BMW is convinced that hydrogen can make an important contribution to sustainable mobility alongside BEVs in the future, which is great. But provided the necessary hydrogen infrastructure is in place and also offers a good price for hydrogen, and then the price of the vehicles falls. So in those circumstances, hydrogen fuel cell cars can be the zero emissions technology that allows users to maintain the flexible driving habits they are accustomed to. So you could say that the future is looking bright for FCEVs, right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, the technology is there and is continuing to evolve. And it's just the thing that at the end of the day, it's down to the customer's choice. 
each driver has different wants and needs when it comes to mobility. So true, so true. And there you have it, folks. Everything you need to know about hydrogen fuel cell cars. It's an important technology to keep our eyes on since it could very well play an even bigger role in the future because it is better for the environment in so many ways. And that's a great place to end for today. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Changing Lanes. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast for future episodes. And to dive deeper into all things BMW, head on over to BMW.com to learn more. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jonathan. And this has been Changing Lanes. See you next time. <laughs>